Hi, and welcome to another episode of Your Voice Matters. I'm Janet Mbogwa, and this has been a series of conversations happening over the last few weeks, and we're just two weeks away from the Generation Equality Forum. In fact, it'll be less than that by the time this goes up live on Capital FM's page, a forum that's marking 26 years since the largest gathering to discuss gender equality took place in Beijing in 1995. And this forum is about taking stock on where the gaps are and how we can progress to the next 26 years. And there also seems to be a pretty big focus on how young people can take action moving forward. And so today's conversation is on cyberbullying. Yes, one of the most toxic uh, and very disturbing conversations to talk about because we all know the digital space is, it can be incredible. It's revolutionized so many things. But there's the dark side that we can't run away from. And I have an incredible group of panelists to help me navigate this conversation. We have Felista Gitonga from Equality Now. This is a collaboration with Equality Now and Better for Kenya. We have Marka Solang, who is an influencer. He actually says I'm influential, not mm. an influencer. <laughs> and a photographer as well. Um, yeah. And I think I can safely say he's a male ally, because I feel like he's yeah. always on the right side yeah. um, of conversations, especially to do with gender-based violence and um, gender equality, so thank you. thank you. And we have Kaleche Mumo, who has been in the media space. She's a content creator, an influencer, and very passionate about this topic as well. So thank you all for being here. Thank you thank for you. having us. Thank you. I want to read something, and let's see whether you agree. I think most of us might agree. Mm -hmm. um, and we were talking about this earlier, um, author Chimamanda Adichie, and she said um, in an article where she was kind of pouring out her heart against, um, or speaking on her own experiences with cyberbullying. And she said, I've spoken to young people who tell me they're terrified to tweet anything, that they read and reread their tweets because they fear they will be attacked by their own. The assumption of good faith is dead. What matters is not goodness, but the appearance of goodness. We are no longer human beings. We are now angels jostling to out-angel one another. And that was just her highlighting where she feels the space has failed people. Um, Marcus and Kaleche, let's start with you with your own experiences on online bullying. If you can just highlight that. And when, when you really realize, wow, this is, this is cyberbullying in its worst form, we'll come back to how it affected you. But first, just highlighting an experience. And then, Felicity, you'll talk about how cyberbullying manifests as gender-based um, gender violence. So mm -hmm. maybe we can start with you, Marcus. So if I may track back just a bit. Um, I've, I've never quite been uh, the slimmest of individuals in my entire life. Mm -hmm. uh, well, okay, happened once in high school, but then Kenyan high schools tend to sometimes <laughs> do that to <laughs> people. Um, <laughs> but that's pretty much the only time <laughs> <laughs> I have been stick thin. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's something that has carried on from my childhood. So um, admittedly, uh, my physical appearance, my weight has never been a point of complete personal security for myself, mm -hmm. if I may put it that way. Yeah. Um, so transitioning that to now welcome online, and um, you are in, you find yourself in spaces where the internet is a wonderful place. It's also a very dark place. It's the thing about a tool. A tool can be used for pretty much anything. It's That's what you right. choose to do with it. Mm -hmm. Um, so being in this space where there are people that, uh, I'm going to assume tend to have a few of their own personal demons that they're dealing with, but then choose to, mm. um, unleash them on other people as their own way of, 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 of processing them. Um, one of the things that I have encountered in the past is, you know, um, people, uh, some in, so to speak, good faith, uh, talking about, you know, oh, look, your cheeks are so chubby. Uh, <laughs> or, oh, look, you're such a, you know, huggable human being, which is a good, yeah, you know, I, I give amazing hugs, that's true. Um, <laughs> but then there's the other side of things of uh, where now it gets to, earlier on you mentioned, that uh, I can be counted as a male ally. I struggle with that sometimes, mm. uh, precisely because I know I have been on the other side before. Mm. Life and learning mm -hmm. taught me a different perspective. 
Um, so I, I, I don't feel like I have earned the qualifier of, of ally. I don't feel like I've earned it yet. But um, being now in a space presently where I can see things happening and I can speak to them and say this is a wrong thing, this is not a right thing. Recent example that happened, most recent example that happened was um, the case of, if I may raise it, Naomi Osaka when she was talking about not um, being willing to do press conference yes. com conferences. Um, and I remember one of the tweets that really caught my attention at that point in time was someone who said, ban that girl. Mm -hmm. mm. Which in itself is a very layered and very revealing statement yeah. alone. Mm -hmm. um, but then because of the fact that there are people like myself who are willing to see the ill of it and call it out, mm -hmm. that attracts a lot of mm -hmm. negativity. negativity. Mm -hmm. And there's this word that is being popularized now, simping. Yeah, um, yeah exactly. Mm. That expression, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know how to... Put it in words. Yes, yes. <laughs> because it's... it's and, and that's a version of, of, of things that I am presently experiencing. Um, the fact that there are people who are willing to talk about things and to call out uh, what's untrue or what's unjust, especially amongst people of my species as well, mm -hmm. um, attracts a lot of, oh, you're simping, oh, you can't even get her, oh, look at how you're behaving, you're just clowning, oh, this and that, which mm -hmm. truly and honestly, why? Yeah. yeah. If you have picked up, if my phone is over there, mm. you've picked it up without my, my permission and walked out of this room with it, with no intention of coming back to it. Mm. If I call you a thief, you're a thief. Exactly. It is true that you're yeah, a thief. Yeah. If you are stating things um, that are deliberately hurtful, willfully mm. hurtful mm. against people, and I call you out for that, it's speaking what is true of that. In that case, you are a bully. Yes. Yeah. And exactly. until such a point in time as you're willing to pause and look at yourself in the mirror, which again, I call back to me, what? This is 2021. Me, 2013. Me, 2021 are two different people. Right. But you paused. Yes. And, and asked yourself. And asked yourself yes. certain things. Um, you know, the, the thing about this conversation is that it speaks to, I think, very personal experiences and, and testimonies. I, we still, I mean, applaud you and credit you for, for taking that pause. Mm. Because without it, there's a, it's, it's leaving a lot of broken people. Mm. People not pausing mm. and manifesting their toxicity online, especially yeah. in many, many times towards women and girls, mm. um, is just breaking people everywhere. So yes, I, I hear you when you say I struggle with, with male ally. Mm. Mm is what you are. <laughs> 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 Thank you for sharing that, Marcus. Um, we'll come back to kind of how we can begin to, to shift the narratives. Uh, Kaleche, you know, I've, I've, I've known you a long time and you're in the space. You've transitioned from radio and doing a lot of incredible things. We were sharing earlier about an experience that yeah. for you was pretty recent. Yeah. And I'm sure sometimes you're thinking, I've been in this space long enough and you know, just when you think there's progress, just when you think we're getting somewhere, mm. we're back. We're back. Mm. Mm. Speak to that. I, I think, um, you know, your first question was, when did I realize that, that this was cyberbullying? Mm. Being um, behind a microphone on a radio station kind of felt like a protected space back then because, you know, a lot of people would joke that you have the face for radio. And for me, it was you have the body for radio. And you're mm. like, um, okay, mm. wow. And it was, it was more like, yeah, since you don't have to see me, you just have to hear me, whatever vision you create of who I should be or what I should look like is really not my problem, it's yours. Mm. And because of this bullying experience, again, like Marcus, I've always been more of a plus size um, girl from, from early on in my life. And given that that was something that even, you know, playground bullying was, was still there, back in the day, and yet, you know, you think you outgrow this thing, and now you're adults, look, I am who I am, I am not my hair, I am not my size, I am not, I am not, but it still comes up. So for me, it came up 
a lot of times. And so what I did when I got onto radio, because I was much older, by the time I got in, I was just, bef just before I got to 30, I decided to keep a very low profile. So it took very long before people knew what I looked like, because I'd never allow myself to be photographed and put into the magazines and the whatever was going on, blogs that were physical then. But during the time where social media started, as a rule, you have to bring your brand out on social media mm -hmm. for you to be able to carry on radio. We had to. And I would get it. Like, oh, you're too big. Do something about your weight. Oh, 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 oh. And I, I, and I remember I used to respond and say, I'm OK. If you're not OK, please follow someone who looks like the type of person who you think mm -hmm. you know, works for you. Mm -hmm. Because we all have preferences. And that's just how God made us. So mm -hmm. you do you. So to, to, to come forward to now, that was that was like in two thousand and eight, mm. okay. Come fast forward. I went and did my weight loss journey before I hit forty. I still got hate from people who were like, "Oh, now you have become small. You have left us big people. Wow. Oh, I liked you big. Now I can never ever ever want to have sex with you." And I'm like, "Why would you write that on my page? I don't yeah. know you. Yeah. You know." Oh, yeah. To, to fast forward to now, it's 2021, and there will be somebody who will comment and say, umeanza kunona tena. And I'm like, yeah, well, there's COVID also. Be 45 and show me how your hormones work, mm. yeah. you know? And, and so the, then the question is, do you respond? Do you not respond? Do you think that responding will educate or take us back? Mm. So the most biggest recent thing that happened, and which I found pretty responsible, of um, a, a blog, oh, I'll call them blog, because that's what they are. Uh, and I am going to say who they are, because I think they need to be called out for it. Pulse mm. Live went and pulled up um, a story. Right now, over COVID, they're desperate because, as it were, not everybody uh, is doing anything. And so the stories are much smaller than they would be. Mm -hmm. And so now they're reaching to create content. And they mm -hmm. went and reached to create this um, content from an old interview, which I don't even remember if I'd done it with them or maybe at a different place. I think a, a different place. Mm -hmm. And um, the topic was about um, the, the, whole, the whole issue of us uh, deciding, you know, are we, are we gonna be stereotypes or not? Are you a stereotype? How do you deal with it? And the stereotypes that we face in Kenya are really about tribalism, and that's the biggest one that we've ever had to fight with. And they picked um, an interview where I talked about stereotyping and why, for me, I don't see how I can stereotype anybody for where they come from, because that's not how I was um, you know, introduced to people. I was taken to a school where there were people from all sorts of walks of life. By the time I went to boarding school, it was even more. Mm. So I gave an example of our parents who were the ones who were really stuck with this, that mm. stereotyping. And my mother had one time, in her worry of who are you dating, met a guy that I was dating who was a Luo. And for her, she kind of panicked because of what she had been told. And the statement that I shared, that my mother had said that that time, was you'd rather even date an Indian than, than date someone from Western. And then I went on to explain that I told her that for me, it doesn't make any sense because I don't see him as that. Is he a good person? And that was my example in this conversation that was obviously bigger, the same way we're having this big conversation here. Mm -hmm. So to pick one item, go and blow it up with the uh, clickbait and say, my mother warned me against Western men, mm -hmm. men from Western rather, let's put it that way. And the hate, in a year before we go into elections, the hate was all... How can you say you hate people from there? This is why you're single. This is why you never get married. This is why you never have children. And so it was weeks and weeks on end of that kind of bullying. And it brought me back the fact that there is a vision that people have in this country or over the blogs and whatever, the social media, that there's a woman who should be a certain way. And in their vision, if you have not hit things out the park of you're not married, you don't have children, therefore there's something wrong with you. It's a big issue, and to me, that is, your, that is violence towards me as a woman. You know, you don't know my life, you don't know the decisions I've made, you don't know the circumstances, you don't know the prayers. Because maybe I've been praying here for a husband, but God is like, you know, you need to fix that, fix that, fix that. And that's the work in progress. So for me, it's been still, you know, shocking that even after all this time, you almost feel like 
you really will never impress everyone and you will not be suitable to everyone's taste. Because there could be another young person who's like, if I lose weight, then they'll like me. No. Mm. If somebody it has intention to bully you, it doesn't matter. They'll even bully your hair style. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah, they'll walk onto your to your page and, and say what they want to. Oh, yeah, you know, as I, I guess I in many ways, and, and and the reason you're both here is because um, a lot of the time, public public figures or people who have profiles become pretty easy targets. Mm. Um, and I think you know, Marcus, you were saying earlier when it comes to like if if it's gendered, it really the cruelty a lot of the time is towards women. Mm. Yes. You know, um, and so how do you, Felista, how does online bullying manifest as gender-based violence. I think Kaleche has hinted at it because mm. those words and those attacks and that vitriol is, mm. it really in many ways just feels like a form of violence. Mm. Mm. Um, in the space you're in, you know, given that there's a lot of, it's transitioned. Yeah. It's essentially, this, these are the times we live in. Mm. And so how does it manifest as gender-based violence and in the space, in the CSO, spa CSO space, what is being done to include this in mm. conversations on gender-based violence? Mm -hmm. Actually, they have both alluded mm. to it being a form of uh, gender-based violence. And what we have to remember is that um, online cyberbullying, cyber violence is also by extension any other form of violence. And actually, when you see people who are violent online, there's a very high probability within their personal spaces that they are also violent with the people they are mm. interacting with. Yeah. And I see this being very gendered in a way that he has talked about being uh, this simping argument where we have this masculinity conversation where any man who shows some sense of progressive arguments then is emasculated within that space or you are a simp. And then on the other side, looking at it from Kaleche's uh, story, this idea of one, because she's famous, using her platform to, to, to latch on it for you to get the clicks that you want to get without really worrying about what does that translate to her as a person and what is the impact of that. But also to look at it in terms of face. I, when you are in the online space, it's about attention. Mm -hmm. And attention is power. Mm -hmm. But also because we live in a very patriarchal culture, power is constructed from a place of patriarchy. And that's why when a man speaks and speaks for issues that do not advance patriarchy, then he's told you are simping. You are not advancing that misogynistic agenda that mm -hmm. we see and we translate women as. Uh, and then when it comes to women, it's actually double-edged. So there are women who are famous like Kaleche and yourself, who you have a brand. Somebody can lean on that and be able to take from it a profit here from you. And it doesn't matter what they have to say because nobody is holding them accountable to that. Then there's the other side where still patriarchy uh, has the power to give attention. So for example, if you are just an ordinary girl and you go on social media and post a picture of yourself looking good and you say, wow, look at me, I'm looking good. You see there's a sun vitriol and mm -hmm. violence that mm -hmm. you experience with people putting you down and the idea is how dare you think this small opinion that you have of yourself should be put out in a platform right. where we will see it we are the ones who give you the authority mm -hmm. to either say mm -hmm. you are beautiful or you are not beautiful mm -hmm. so how dare you put yourself there so that backlash in itself it's not just about um, we do not agree in terms of opinion. Mm. It's about silencing. Yeah. Yeah. Silencing yeah. a yeah. discourse that people are nervous about mm. and uh, also which is very gendered. So mm. we want men to behave a certain way. We want women to behave a certain mm -hmm. way. But the consequence of that all is that um, as we are engaging in these spaces, there is a reduction because we are censoring ourselves. We, mm -hmm. When we, we get into those spaces, we don't want to, to speak our minds fully. Mm -hmm. And when you look at it from the place of women, you find that you are afraid even to put yourself out there mm. because you don't want that reduction for you to be reduced into, you know, a sex item. Mm. And the fact that even she your arguments... something. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and I the fact that even yeah. your, your arguments 
are, are dumbed down a little bit. And I think one of the good examples about it is our women who are content creators online. And the fact that there's a need to label them as slay queens and not as content creators. Right. I remember at the beginning of this year, um, one of South Africa's biggest um, um, content creators, her name is Kefilwe Mabote, and she works with luxury brands. And she was dating a certain man within the South African space, a businessman, and he had a scandal. Remember, Kefilwe had had, you know, her... her her brand for quite a while, but she was dating this man for around six, six, um, six months and all that before he got into a scandal. And what happened is that one of the newspapers in South Africa took um, her name and put her on oh the pages yeah. and said, look, Kefilwe is one of the young women who are mm -hmm. benefiting from the bedroom of this businessman. And she did something that I also want and I wish more Kenyan content creators would do. She sued the mm. newspaper, mm. aligned and also, you know, tried to demonstrate that this is not actually me. I don't get this through, this mm. reward of mm. sleeping with men or all that. This is my brand. Yeah. And you diminishing my brand by, you know, calling me a slay queen. Mm or trying to, you know, mm -hmm. um, make it look like my su success it's is aligned to this man. Mm. It's, it's actually mm. an injury to my brand. And because I work with luxury brands, mm. this is making me very nervous. It, it's an and injury to the fact that yeah. you, could, you, you can cost me my work, which yes. yeah, in many ways sometimes that's used as a way to diminish even the resources that exactly. you make. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, Do you think it's sometimes targeted? That sometimes I feel like... They want you to be reduced to nothing mm. in the in because I'm always after what was your intention mm. in, in and I read about that story yeah. mm. and I realized that they wanted to to smear her in all of this and mm. and package her as that yeah. whether it is the desire to sell the story or whether it is a question of this girl needs to be put in her place sometimes mm. I unfortunately that plays in my mind mm. and while you were speaking I, I remember a post on Facebook which by the way is just difficult for me because I feel like the, the men on Facebook, they speak a different language. I mean, we're mm -hmm. not on the same planet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And their hate is really targeted. Some, I posted a, a, a photo and first of all, it was an inspirational quote. Mm -hmm. And um, one guy commented and said, oh, thank you for losing weight. And so I said to him, um, why are you thanking me? We were not in this together. I was not sitting on you. I was not hurting <laughs> you. you know. And do you know that that, my response, and mm. I told him, perhaps maybe you should have said, you look good. Because if your intention was to say, you like the way I look now, mm. then just say, hey, you're looking nice. Mm. And leave it at that. Mm. The amount of comments that went to that went up to about 700 comments on mm. that response mm -hmm. and one guy said oh you have no right to tell him that he was say, being nice in fact you be, should be more careful with your fans because we made you oh. no you mm. did not no. and so currency. at that point i asked no, myself oh the currency of power. when you were creating <laughs> me in the womb <laughs> of thy parents yeah. was this guy there mm. Mm. secondly the way i worked hard mm. to be who i am today mm. Mm -hmm. really where yeah. were you and because you ascribe to my content, if I was not good at what I did, mm. you would not be my fan. Mm. Mm. You would not pay attention, you would not listen if, if I did not deliver quality. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I think you need to check yourself because no fan made anybody who is doing something out there. Mm. Yeah. We, while we appreciate that you appreciate what we do, our strength doesn't come from you. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I, I think I, I want to... to yeah, briefly, because I know we <laughs> need to go <laughs> to a <laughs> break <laughs> really quickly. Yeah. And especially when we talk about the fact that it's a man who told yeah. you that. Within, you know, the construct of, of, of GBV and also the patriarchal nature of it is that women, we are told within that system, you are to be seen. Mm. You are to seek attention, mm. and that attention is supposed to be given to you by exactly. men. So when we exist in this space... If they decide to. If yeah. they decide to, yeah. Exactly. And, 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 and if you should be so lucky. Yeah, yeah. You should be so lucky. So the minute you give that man the response, it was you having the audacity to tell that yeah. man, I have done this for myself. Mm. Mm. It has nothing to do with what you've given me or what mm. you have yeah. denied me. Yeah. And then that's now backlash is the 
how dare you? Mm -hmm. Something that we as men are supposed to give you, mm. take it and own mm. it. So mm. now the label of you being either, you know, an attention seeker yes. or, or trying to do that becomes an issue of, you know, women who engage within that space where you, it's, it's an online space, it's a place where you can have an opinion, they need to be toned down. That's right. Yeah, you That's need to exactly the message I got, yes. that you need to be and toned that, down. And that as you, as you tone down, when you post, when you, you expected us to do what, you yeah. post so that we tell you how yes. you look. Yes. I actually got that. Yes. And I was yeah. like, okay, then maybe we won't post. Yeah. <laughs> no, we'll take a short break, but it's, it's important that you shared your experiences um, mm. because it's, it, it's a lot more hurtful. I think we sometimes put on a very brave face, but mm. it's, it's, it's really hurtful. And I think... Um, yes, we appreciate that not everyone online is a bully. Not everyone on any app, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, is one. Um, but we have to appreciate the fact that there is so much vitriol. And when we come back, it's talking about accountability. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I know that there's certain um, you know, policies in place that are meant to protect us mm -hmm. um, and protect many other men and women who are facing uh, cyberbullying. And so we'll talk about how we can how that how we can translate that to actually work mm -hmm. and be effective i know there's been a lot of changes over the years with different um, authorities trying to do that because you have a lot of young people who've you know gone as far as being suicidal and yeah. depressed yeah. and so um i always say this in these conversations is that you have to remember that people's lives depend on these policies being implemented yes. you know because we're not all able to stomach the vitriol mm. um you know I, e even when i think of my own experiences it's it's having to constantly and intentionally over the years build thick skin to still remain online. Because yeah. yeah. the moment you lose that, you can retreat yeah. for as long as possible. So we'll come back and have a conversation around accountability and even hear from everyone moving forward. How can we create safer spaces online, especially for girls and women? We'll be back. This is Your Voice Matters. Be sure to use that hashtag, Your Voice Matters. Also use Act for Equal. We're focusing today on cyberbullying. And this is part of a series of conversations we've had on gender-based violence in the build-up to the Generation Equality Forum. Um, there's a paragraph here that says, throughout the world, cyberbullying, which is defined as the use of internet and or mobile technology to harass, intimidate, or cause harm to another person, and online harassment have emerged as a new pandemic with devastating con consequences for a wide spectrum of people, including children and adults, the powerful and the powerless, celebrities, media personalities, girls and women, which I really think sums it up. And we've talked, spoken to our experiences um, and to how it manifests as, as gender-based violence. Uh, Marcus, just before we came back, we were talking about the fact that this is our reality, this is our day-to-day. Your thoughts on how we can better mainstream mm -hmm. these conversations, um, you know, so that they don't exist in silos and they don't exist sporadically. Mm. How can we encourage conversations of creating safe spaces? Mm -hmm. And how can we support women um, online because they are often the targets of, of, of cyberbullying? There's, there's an element of, first off, creating a safe space. The, the very, we were talking about it just now, the very idea and the very fact that we keep having separate silos for these conversations mm -hmm. is in itself something that is flawed. Precisely because if we look at, first of all, bullying as a whole, that's not something that's, that happens in isolation. It happens pretty much every single day. We spoke right before we started and we were talking about how there are people who um, simply walking into this room there's someone who, not here, um, but another person who would walk into a space and see a uh, service staff and talk. Mm, talk down. Down, down at yes, them. at mm. them. Mm. Um, you go into a, an office space and you find someone who um, is otherwise uh, a respectable human being, but when the doors are closed and when the cameras are not rolling, they are this horrible, horrible human being. Mm. Um, and one of the things that I'm driving towards is the fact that the unfortunate thing is bullying a lot of times is rewarded rather than yeah. castigated. 
Um, and that's something that a lot of bullies tend to ride on, ride on exactly. Mm. Um, the fact that there's a certain human being, if we bring back to the online space, who I will not mention because I'm not giving them mileage. Hey, um, <laughs> like, like, don't mention them. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> a certain human being that has made mm. Saturdays a thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the entire stream of things is simply talking down at um, women mm. in the guise of empowering men. That's not empowerment. No, the, the, if, if your empowerment is based on the belittling of someone else, mm -hmm. you're no different from a colonizer. Because no. mm -hmm. that's exactly what colonialism was. It was coming, you are a nobody, I am going to displace you out, and you're going to do as I will it mm -hmm. to be. Mm -hmm. That is exactly what centuries of, 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 of slave trade have enabled, centuries of colonialism have enabled, centuries of patriarchy have enabled. Mm -hmm. The very fact that I have to speak down at someone else to gain power, that, that's yeah, not... Yeah. That's not creating value, that's not empowering, that's simply mm. crushing someone else for your own ego's sake. Mm. So, bringing it back, bullying. Um, th there needs to be active ways of doing two things. One, disincentivizing the rewards. Mm. Um, and which is why, as I mentioned that activity, I'm not mentioning the person's name because mm. that's, again, driving attention towards them. Yeah. Um, and there are spaces in which... Um, I have had such conversations where it would be vital to address the subject without addressing the person because, again, not that's how Trump became a president yeah. somehow. <laughs> um, because we were talking at, we were talking about the horrible things that he's doing, the ripple effect being we are amplifying yeah. his work. Yes. And the more we amplify that work, the more the thing becomes accepted, the more the bullying becomes accepted, the more the talking down it becomes accepted, mm -hmm. the more the belittling becomes accepted. And that's not a thing that we're trying to encourage. That's number one. Um, not, not giving an incentive to that to behavior. Yeah. But at the same time, number two, I feel, is calling it out. The, the thing that I came to understand was or rather is the fact that I am in a position of relative privilege. Mm -hmm. The mere fact that I am born a man mm. means that I have certain privileges based on how society is structured yeah. um, that you wouldn't have, right. um, simply because of how things have been over time. Mm. The idea, and it's something that's perpetuated by, this is very personal for me, it's something that's perpetuated by church and Christianity. Mm -hmm. The idea that you need to be silent. Mm. The idea of turning the other cheek. Mm. The idea of um, witnessing something that's happening and, oh, well, I'll just go and pray for... No. no. Call it out. Call it out. Mm. Call it out. Call, Call it out. I'm, I'm going to use this as a frame of reference because it's what my personal belief system is. Jesus walked into a temple... Saw people using the temple badly. And he called them out. He whipped those people. <laughs> yeah. He whipped them. Yeah. He used his position of privilege yes. to call out the stupidity in other people. Yes. Which is a thing that needs to happen a lot more mm. with those that believe that there are injustices that are happening. Mm. So one, disincentivize. And two, if you're in a position of power, stop enabling it, but instead calling call it, it out. out. In, and enabling includes silence. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think enabling that's Enabling includes one. silence, yes. Silence. Mm. And, and, and the silence has been viewed as, I really don't want to get my involved. Hands involved. I yeah. don't want to get my hands dirty. Ooh, oh my God, that doesn't look pretty. And it's protecting yourself because you know, just like Jesus, if you have to call out people and you have to get your hands dirty, yes. mm. to him who's given much responsibility, mm. much is respected, yes. is expected yeah. of yes. him. Mm. And that is the way we need to view ourselves. And I keep saying this when I do my shows and the content I create. It's about stop asking about them. You, what are you doing? Yes. How are you living? What's your call to action? Yes. And how are you representing the human race? Yes. Because if you don't clean up yourself, mm -hmm 
they, it doesn't matter who you meet, who you date, who you work, it will never work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to start with self. Mm -hmm. And if I see that this is not supposed to be like this, and I know we do that a lot, even um, as people spew all this um, cyberbullying on our pages, mm -hmm. the question is always, should I respond or should I ignore? Mm -hmm. yeah. And and to uh, what level is ignoring helping this person? Mm -hmm. So that line again comes again with, I know I'm going to get backlash when I chose to respond to the person who said, thank you for losing weight. I knew mm. Mm. it was coming, mm. but I did it because I needed him to get that that is not how you're going to compliment the woman of your dreams. You will lose her mm. because of your stupidity. Yeah. yeah. And what you intended to say was that she looks nice. You appreciate it, but you were using the wrong words. There's a, a problem we have here in Kenya. I've seen it a lot where people like this word violence. Mm. Hey, we're bringing violence. We've chosen the violence. We've chosen violence. Yes. And think it's cool. Yes. Mm. Mm. Me, my question is, why? Yeah. 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 Do you know yeah. what war is? Yeah. Mm. Do you have mm. an idea? And you're having war of spirit. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Because that is a spirit that is chasing you. You're having war of spirit where, mm. you, where mm. you're hurting so much that you want to hurt somebody else. Mm. Mm. And do you know what else it is? I, I, I wanted to let you all yeah. speak because um, I, I just... It, like I said, a lot of these conversations, it, it, it comes from experiences and, and, you know, and having grown in the space long enough to know how to call it out. It's interesting, you've spoken about the choosing, uh, you know, violence mm -hmm. statements. And even when Marcus said who he was many years ago isn't who he is today. I mean, I think the same with a lot of us, it's, it's choosing to evolve, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, because we are all different, right, from yeah. how we were before. That's mm -hmm. right. And you also use the word privilege, which, mm -hmm. yes, when we're talking about patriarchy and men, it's, it's automatic. Mm -hmm. um, there's different instances of privilege. So yeah. even, for example, I know I sit at a you know, position of privilege. And so I had to lift the privilege veil and lens mm -hmm. <laughs> over time mm -hmm. to really unlearn and relearn certain things. Mm -hmm. and and one of them was about speaking out. Yes, I'm glad that my background as somebody who was in the media mm. brought me face to face with social injustices things. and issues mm. worldwide in mm. the country, everywhere. But it's having, it's choosing, mm. it's either choosing to ignore, which is always easier, right? Mm, right. Mm. Or choosing to, to look at it in, in the face. And I remember you also mentioned something that, that came from the church. I remember my mom, I think of myself even in high school, mm. I was you know, not leading strikes. But I would kind of tell people, speak for what you yeah. believe in. And I got into a lot of trouble for it. And I remember she told me, when you, the day you speak for people, you have to be ready to be persecuted. That's right. Mm -hmm. Be ready for So it. make peace mm -hmm. with that and yeah. then, then now go do for your it. Thing. Yeah. And yeah. so many years later, um, having a very odd relationship with the digital space where first you want to be seen as prim and proper and everybody mm. should like mm. me. Mm. Yeah. And then when that's stripped off real quick, mm. you're like, I'm a just be. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but yes. I think my turning point came um, in 2015, which I mentioned, the body shaming, I was pregnant yeah. and I was on TV. And before that, I'd never really spoken, oh, you're pushed back. Mm. But I think because it was such an attack on womanhood, um, I did. And it shifted something in me Then that shifted even more from 2017 when a colleague of mine um, and a friend in the space, we were at an event of hers and you know, she put up a picture which somebody whose name I wouldn't mention to Marcus's point, no need yeah. to give them mileage, mm -hmm. laughed at rape, yeah, laughed at her experience that. of rape. Mm. Um, there was two things that, that came out of that for me. One, it was sad that only maybe one or two of us spoke, spoke out, out. Mm. you know? And a lot of people were sliding into our DMs saying, you go, I'm like, why are you in my DM? Yeah. Why mm. just yeah. put it up yeah. Yeah. issue it? But why can't you put it on the put it on the. Mm. But I know a lot, even some male friends, and I was like, why are you DMing me? And, and you know, they said, you know what? We don't want to deal with the pushback. And fine, you can appreciate it, but I said, but this is not how change happens. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I think from then on, I was like, persecute away. Yeah. Mm. But it takes a lot of intentionality, right. a lot of educating oneself yeah. mm. on policies, on narratives, etc. It doesn't happen overnight, mm. and it's still happening. Mm. And so um, we're on the online space every day. It doesn't mean tomorrow it's mm. not going to come at me. It probably will. Mm. But being in the mind to know you've chosen to speak out, but yeah. you're also choosing to constantly educate yourself, mm. constantly trying to to watch your narrative. Don't be tone deaf, yeah. mm. you know, and get uncomfortable. You yeah. say it, get mm. your just hands dirty. You yeah. also yeah. said it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm just wondering how we can continue to manifest and encourage others to do the same. Mm. And before Marcus and Kaleche touch on that and also digital self-care, because I also want mm. to, to wind up with that, mm. it's to come back to Felista and talk about a little bit about policies. Because you talked about in SA, mm. you know, she was able to sue. Yeah. Um, 
And so what can you speak of about how best we can keep spaces safe online? Mm. What, you know, what you as Equality Now or the CSO space or even government, some of the things that you can speak to that are tangible and happening mm. that people need to know about so that they can, mm. they can feel like we're going to move into a safe space. And even as you answer that very quickly, I want to mention that in the coming days, the Generation Equality Forum will be addressing online tech companies that control the online space, mm. calling, uh, people to, calling for people to give greater control to manage their safety and also for them to improve their systems for reporting abuse. So there's something that's going to be announced soon. Mm -hmm. So speaking to that before we can get some final comments from Marcus yeah. and Kaleja. Yeah. 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 In the essence of, you know, in terms of the policy and also what framework are we working with? We need to realize that um, addressing GBV in the online space, it's by exten extension on other things that we are addressing on the online space. So for example, um, WhatsApp updated its um, terms in terms of how it will engage with people and there were a lot of issues around. Um, you know, how much information are you accessing about me? How much are you sending out to other people? If you look at Europe, there has been um, organized response to that. In fact, within the European Union space, there is um, like a tech policy at around data where you're supposed you know, to, to, to follow certain guidelines. And if even you work for an organization that is in Europe and you live in Kenya, they might have communicated to you how they have changed in terms of how they engage in data. Mm -hmm. But you see within the African region, that has not happened. We have agreed with the terms as, uh, as we have been given. Then also look at Nigeria, where you know Nigerians the last year have used the space to speak about and SARS, mm -hmm. the br uh, police brutality within their country. And by extension, the government of Buhari, you know, responding to that. And then, of course, the president going online and threatened the people of, 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 of the north, mm, of the south, actually, the Igbo community. And Twitter translated that as, you know, hate crime, just like they blocked um, and removed Trump from the online space, they removed him. And the consequence of that has been him banning Twitter in Nigeria. So th the, the whole dynamic is, 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 is interlocked in a way that we cannot address one without addressing the other. So we have to talk about um, our, our data, we have to talk about um, security, we have to talk about uh, freedom of expression within this context. And right now where we are in Kenya, I know there has been um, a policy around data management, but I think we need to expand that conversation to include all these other things that are happening within the online space. If you look at spaces like such as the UK, because of the grooming mm -hmm. of children within the online space, they have taken care of that. When the schools were closed, we have seen so many girls disappear from their homes and then ended up being killed or ended up being sex trafficked because they have been interacting with people online mm -hmm. who are grooming them and taking them away from their homes and all that. How are we addressing that? There is also situations where um, uh, I find, you know, people have been engaged in intimate spaces sexually and then somebody uses that to retaliate to on you and put you know, images mm. of you mm. or, uh, out there. We are still not addressing that. So this framework is, is something we need to have a national conversation on. Yeah. And mm. I know the Kenyan government um, through the State Department of Gender did a report around two years ago and I remember CSCOBIA um, sounding an alarm around um, uh, online space and the violence that women are experiencing. In fact, it was ranked the highest form of violence within that report where women were experiencing um, a lot of uh, violence within the online space. And she said, well, this is dangerous for us because this is the new frontier of mm -hmm. engagement. This is where we are doing a lot of things. So if women are experiencing violence within this space, it means we are limiting their engagement, we are limiting their ability to get money, you're, you're limiting their ability to become opinion leaders, you're limiting their ability, you know, to get a lot of things done, and therefore that's something that must be addressed. So within the policy framework um, uh, uh, environment, I think we need to do more as, an uh, as, as a country, as stakeholders, as civil society ac actors, as uh, women's rights activists, it's something that we need to deal 
with, but also looking at it with the broader spectrum uh, around all these oh other yeah. issues. Oh yeah, whether it's, it's, it's cultural, social, it's, it's, it's interlinked. Mm -hmm. It has to be holistically looked at and we'll try and share in the caption, in, some, in, in the video, some, some resources that people can also um, visit and also just kind of update on what is being done in the space. Um, Marcus, people right now, I mean, they're watching this, they're sharing this, they're having these conversations, they're online every day. What tools, first it's two-pronged, what tools do you use <laughs> mm -hmm. to be safe online? What tools do you think are important for, especially women online, that they, a tangible tool that they can think through or adopt that can just help them navigate this often murky space? Just from your point of view, mm -hmm. what kind of, what, what tool would that look like? Not gonna lie, that's a tricky question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, How do you self <laughs> online? <laughs> that's that's a yeah. Question. yeah, I heard you uh, mention something about yes. going off a certain app, so I'll come to yeah. you about yeah. how yeah. what how you've chosen yes. to create a safe space for your mental yeah. health for how yeah. you navigate online. Yeah. How do you do it? Um, in terms of yes, it's important to have on a policy level. It's important to have these policies that we are speaking about that we want to have in place. Um, but one of the things that I I'm, I'm, I'm a personal believer in personal responsibility. Mm. And so if you're in a policy space or if you're in a space where you are interacting with engaging and forcing this policy and now linking it again back to something that you mentioned of some of the men who say, well, I don't want to interact because I'm not too comfortable with the pushback, mm. then is it a thing you really believe in? Mm. Mm. Because you have to be very clear, you can't be lukewarm. Yeah. You're yeah. either yeah. this or that. Yeah. 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 So either you believe in this thing or you don't. And if you believe in it, you're going to speak about it. If you don't, yeah. then You're yes. complicit. Yes, you're complicit. Mm. So we need to be very clear on that. But now bring it back to um, in terms of mm. making it an individual thing. Why I say it's a tricky question is the unfortunate thing is it shifts responsibility away from the bully mm -hmm. to the actual victim. That's true. Mm. And you almost absolve the, mm. the, the bully, bully yes. Yeah. And that's why I find that that's a tricky question because it then puts, it then places it on you to say, mm. oh, well, um, that's them, this is me kind of thing, which mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. being the victim of the situation should not be the case. If right. anything, it should be on the aggressor yeah. to answer to that question. Yeah. However, in terms of self-care, um, it's, it's difficult precisely because it requires developing a thick skin, mm. yeah. <laughs> which is not an easy thing to do because that then also implies that it's been years of suffering the same kind of violence and abuse okay, yeah. for you to get to the point of saying, ah, screw this, mm. I'm not going to give it any more thought. Yeah. That's a lot of abuse that has already been endured. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's true. And the nature of the world today is it's very difficult to avoid the online space unless you're literally living off the grid. Mm. Yeah. Very literally. Yeah. A lot of us in this room require it fundamentally for every single thing that we do. Yeah. Um, but that said, personal opinion, I am now at the point of, um, and we're talking about this, we just mentioned it earlier on, I'm at the point of using my platforms to say what I intend on saying mm -hmm. and move away. A lot of what I use my pl uh, my platforms for now, um, when I'm interacting, is to get the different perspectives and understand different points of view. And that is how I then evolved from 2013 me mm. to 2021 version of me. Um, and the unfortunate thing is for a lot of the victims of bullying, it's very unfortunate that it has to get to that point yeah of saying, I will choose not to care anymore, but that's not a position. It's like saying, I will choose not to be stolen from anymore. Mm -hmm. No, actually, the stealing will still happen. I will choose not to care about the thing that has been stolen from me. Yeah. But if you steal my camera, you've stolen my work. Yeah. Yeah. I can't yeah. earn a living, earn a living. Yeah. Mm. so I have to care about it. Right. Yeah. So unless um, I have a way of 
persecuting the person that has stolen from me. It's the same parallel. Mm -hmm. Unless there are systems mm -hmm. and policies and platforms upon which we can actively educate for those that are willing to educate. The internet is there. It is yeah. free. People are just choosing not to self-educate. Yeah. Yeah. But still, unless we get to a point where we can actively educate, where we can actively enforce, and uh, a thing that's been happening on the internet lately, and I am a partial fan of it, is going after the aggressors yeah. in the same with the same kind of energy mm -hmm. that they speak mm -hmm. out against victims. I'll give an example here. A couple of weeks ago, yeah. time is moving very quickly. It's months. Mm -hmm. Is it months? There were certain characters on a large platform, radio, mm -hmm. who chose to actively speak mm -hmm. down on someone who had just been, had just survived mm -hmm. an attempt on their life. Yeah. Aggressor being a man, victim being a woman. Mm -hmm. And in as much as I will, um, I would not be the biggest fan of this happening in any other context. Mm -hmm. At some point, those with power to say otherwise have to fight back. Mm -hmm. And in this particular case, it got to the point where these people were relieved of their positions of authority, mm -hmm. which I am a fan of. Because that then shows, linking back to what we said earlier on, a lot of the a lot of bullying that happens now is rewarded. Yeah. We need to get to a point where mm. we take, okay. we're taking yeah. that away. Best yeah. example. Self care is very difficult. Yeah. Back to your question. Yeah. Because it's an interlinked con it's an interlinked context. Yeah. No, I really really love how you've in the yeah. insistence and persistence on let us not absolve the perpetrator yeah. yes yeah. because it becomes oh you know and and i get we do sometimes for the sake of our mental health mm. want to create nooks and crannies and corners where we can at least kind of center ourselves yeah. mm. but never losing the will to push back or to yes. speak yeah. out so yes. yeah. i think you've you've explained that so mm. well yeah. Yeah. and i like that you said yes it's true it's it absolves mm. when yeah. you say what can we do mm. it's no what can we do to silence them. I think on this platform uh, weeks ago is when somebody said, if we're all, if we're all loud enough, we can silence the yes. bully. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yeah. yes. And we're about to wind up. I, I think the producers are like, we need to <laughs> wind up. Yes. Um, so, so some of the tools you've, you've asked about, I saw recently one of the mobile um, providers uh, created something where um, parents and young people can actually report cases of cyberbullying against children and I believe they are the ones suffering the most of it now we think we are as adults but we are not mm -hmm. being a teenager right now and and you've, you've been born into a world where this is what you have and parents these days are giving their children access kids have ways of finding access to the internet to social media there's a lot of bullying going there and so your question was how do I self-care mm -hmm. I realized and the beauty about being in your mid 40s is that you realize what's what's the most important to you? Mm. Peace and comfort. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For me, that's the most important. Mm. And so when it is making me feel um, like it's messing up my day, I'm getting so aggravated, I'm getting anxious about it, I choose to walk away. Not because I wouldn't like to see this platform work for me. And remember, like uh, Marcus has said, you take away from me um, social media platforms, you've taken away my money because I have mm. been an influencer for so long. I'll have clients who will come and say, yeah, so we want you to influence us on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. And then I tell them, actually, I only work on Instagram. Mm. Mm. And it's a whole conversation. And I say, yeah, it's just aggressive. And chances are, seeing the way you've presented to me your brand, I can tell you for free, it will not work because they will be looking at poking holes mm -hmm as opposed to actually hearing what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's taken some time for me to actually um, get that through to some of the clients that I work with, mm -hmm. that while your people work on Facebook, great, but if you're gonna work with me, that is not going to be somewhere where I'm really gonna push my stuff. So initially for me it was Twitter where I just said, it's, it's so fast and there's just 
you could post one thing with your mind very clear about it then go about your business because we are busy mm. like we're here shooting <laughs> we're busy mm. and then i come back and i go oh You're my trending. god mm. what happened mm. <laughs> and, you know i i don't have time for those kind of surprises yeah. so mm. that was twitter was for me was first and that's um probably from from about 2018 when i was like mm -hmm. i'm sorry i can't but recently it's been facebook and especially with the last few incidents where it doesn't matter mm -hmm. people will not look at what the in fact i keep asking have you read the caption? Do you know where we are? Mm. I could have even just shared with you a Bible verse to encourage you because I know where, where things are now. Yeah. We're all going through this. But again, there's a lot of that entitlement kind of conversation. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I feel as much as, yes, it, it is, um, we're talking about cyberbullying and we're talking about it being on the social platforms. I feel like we, had a, we have a bigger problem with the mentality of where people see themselves and why people are so aggravated with looking at somebody who's worked hard to be where they are. Janet, you mm -hmm. didn't wake up here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, Beyonce said, I woke up like this. It's a lie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? I Nobody woke up like yeah. this. Mm -hmm. You worked and worked, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like the conversation needs to even go deep down into what are we um, taught people? Why do people have that there's them and there's us? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whether it was the colonialist and we have not uncovered all these things yeah. and yeah. all these things are backlogs of, of, of emotions yeah, yeah. but I feel like it goes beyond that because there has to be a way you view yourself mm -hmm. before you come to write something nasty yes. to someone yes. mm. or continue a thread about it and try to make yourself feel better about yourself mm -hmm. by being nasty mm. yeah. so it goes beyond this okay mm. yeah. we could be here all day we <laughs> do we do really have to to cut and we'll see if we can do um, a side chat on the same I'm really sorry that you felt like you had to step back from the spaces. I'm yeah. glad it's working for you. Mm -hmm. But you know, I, again, to, to Marcus's point, it's so unfortunate that you, you're yeah. driven to make the decision to step back, mm -hmm. you know? Um, it's, it's, like I said, we, we all have our own relationships and how we, we, we relate on, on the digital space. I do know that I've talked before about taking, you know, breaks once in a while just to center and, but just having to build the muscle to say this is where I do work. This is digital mm -hmm. advocacy. I live for it, uh, be that as it may. It's sometimes it's 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 pretty difficult, and so it's unfortunate that you've you've had to step back <laughs> from those mm -hmm. platforms. Yeah. But if it's if it's serving the purpose of giving you the peace of mind you need, mm -hmm. um, then you know it, if that, if that's what works for you. It's just very unfortunate that that I had know. to happen. That we had to lose your voice on those platforms, <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. And in as much as that's what the bullies wanted i know it's also that you're doing it for your peace of yeah. mind yeah. Yeah. um because it's a trigger it is yeah. and we can get very triggered yeah. and i can talk <laughs> about triggers all day <laughs> <laughs> i really can because it's it's I've, I've had to learn how to manage my triggers and a lot of it is there so thank you all i think for speaking in a way that's relatable i think to to people who'll be watching this um like we mentioned we'll try and share some resources um in the caption i know even um facebook as well as an app has has created tools that one can use to navigate the online space. So let's try and explore the tools that social media apps are trying to create now. Because this conversation has become a global one, they have been forced as, as online platforms to think through tools first for the safety of children mm -hmm. um, that, that women can use, even if it means censoring certain words that can't appear in your comment That's section. Right. Mm. So explore the tools um, as much as you can. Take time mm -hmm. today, if you're on Facebook, explore the tools. They have a library of information that you can explore and use. Um, Instagram as well, Twitter, all of these platforms are trying to create tools to make sure that you feel as safe as you possibly can online. Mm -hmm. um, and for those of you who are experiencing um, cyberbullying, like we said, we'll leave some resources in the comments section, but there's also the national hotline 1195. That's essentially a hotline for gender-based violence, but they can direct you um, to somebody you can speak to as well. So thank you for watching. Please stay safe out there. The, the online space, as we mentioned, is incredibly powerful. It has launched careers. It has changed people's lives. It's given us income. Mm. But on the sa at the same time, be very conscious and aware about going down a dark alley. And if at some point you need to take a break to reconcile and to center yourself, do so. It doesn't <laughs> mean you're weak. It means you're trying to put yourself first and your mental health. Mm. But don't let bullies drive you away, mm. if possible. But if it does come to a point where you feel like you need to take a break for whatever reason, do so, but also equip yourself with the tools to cope, whether that means therapy, whether that means you know, spending time with people who you love and trust, please do that. 
Um, and again, thank you so much for, watch, for watching. Use the hashtag, your voice matters, act for equal. The Generation Equality Forum is coming soon. We're hoping that the commitments that come out of that forum will include uh, commitments to make um, the online space safer for everyone. Thank you for watching. Thank you to our panelists. And thank we'll you see for you again. having us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm.